This was a disgrace. This was a rigged trial by a conflicted judge who was corrupt. It's a rigged trial, a disgrace. They wouldn't give us a venue change. We were at 5% or 6% in this district, in this area. This was a rigged, disgraceful trial. The real verdict is going to be November 5th by the people. And they know what happened here, and everybody knows what happened here. President Trump yesterday, after the decision, which is naturally plastered across every front page in America. Welcome back to our Humble Radio broadcast on this Friday, an extraordinary day in American history. Uh, President Trump's campaign donations website crashed yesterday because of the overwhelming response across the nation to this verdict by 12 New York liberals with a George Soros uh, radical left judge judge and, and a prosecutor, Alvin Bragg and the judge, uh, wow, Juan Merchan, just amazing stuff. Now, the uh, headlines at The Hill at Axio said, to the New York Times, Trump campaign donation site crashes after guilty verdict. And the liberal response to that is to attack conservatives that are donating to President Trump. I'd like to think that there might be some self-described liberals who are who are not pleased with the third worlding of the United States of America as a verb, of course. Donation page for political website crashes, all right, after Trump and the, the win red uh, website crashes after Trump verdict. Amazing stuff. Website after website being overwhelmed by people donating money. Donating till it hurts. The great reporter Molly Hemingway on her, her ex account, what Democrats did today in New York won't hurt Donald Trump. It may even help him. But what Democrats hate, what Democrat hate has done to the country and the rule of law today, almost incomprehensibly dangerous. And uh, Molly Hemingway is uh, pretty much always right about everything. She's an extraordinary reporter and a, a great American, a great thinker, a common sense person. What Democrats did today in New York won't hurt Donald Trump. It may even help him. But what Democrat hate has done to the country and the rule of law is almost incomprehensibly dangerous. All honest people must fight it. Uh, Truly extraordinary. A very, very sad day for the United States of America. Nobody has ever seen anything like this in the United States. This is the stuff of of beephole countries around the world. Countries that we would condemn if we saw this happening in some third world hellhole. Uh, I would expect the State Department and the White House to condemn this kind of behavior from civilized countries and from uncivilized countries too. Extraordinary stuff. Yes, sir. Trump's donor site crashed after he started asking fans for money. Left wing website headline following his guilty verdict in New York. Trump's donation page crashed just after he was found guilty of 34 felony charges. And again, there is uh, there are important uh, analogies to be made here and comparisons to be made here because a lot of this is about the double standards. And were it not for double standards, liberals would have no standards at all. But when it comes to Joe Biden and his family taking in millions of dollars through his crackhead, crook, never-done-nothing, ne'er-do-well son, Hunter Biden, who, by the way, is due in court soon for his for his gun charges, not to be confused with other charges that he may be facing, but the millions of dollars flowing into the Biden family coffers with, we know, Tony Bobulinski, CEO of one of the many Biden family front companies that, that actually do nothing. What business are they in? Are they in real estate? Are they in construction? Are they in investments? They're not in anything. They're in the influence peddling business. 
and Hunter Biden being paid nearly a million dollars a year, along with his friend Devin Archer being paid nearly a million dollars a year, both by the Burisma gas company in Ukraine. Why? Are they in the gas company? No. No. Hunter Biden and Devin Archer? No. Do they speak Ukrainian? No. Have they ever been in business in Ukraine? No. Have they ever visited Ukraine? No. But they're being paid a million dollars a year by Burisma, and Tony Bobolinsky informs us, one of the CEOs of one of their front companies that doesn't, that they don't do anything, these companies, and a couple of dozen of these LLCs and other corporations. And Tony Bobolinsky said that in all the emails, you had 10% for the big guy, uh, and that's out of China because of the China business meetings that Hunter Biden had when he flew to China on Air Force Two when his father was vice president. Uh, millions of dollars flowing into the Biden family coffers from China for what? Did they build a bridge? Did they put up a building? Do they make shoes? Do they make ties? No, they don't do anything. They sell influence. And and where are the charges for that? I, I honestly, again, I think that Republican attorneys general across the, the state attorneys general across the country and that prosecutors in big cities and in counties should charge Joe Biden with crimes today, today, this Friday. Joe Biden should be charged with crimes in all 50 states across the country. And let's get this ball rolling, shall we? Let's also keep in mind, and here's the story from the left-wingers at Politico from 3-30-22. So March 30th of 2022, the headline is, Federal Campaign Watchdog Fines DNC, comma, Clinton campaign over dossier spending disclosure. You see, because the uh, big crime here on the part of Donald Trump is uh, whether the money that he paid of $35,000, that's on the front page of the Washington Post, a photograph of the check to his own lawyer, Michael Cohen, whether that was a, uh, a legal expense or a campaign expense. Well, there it is. It's a paperwork issue. Which bucket did it come from? Well, the Federal Election Commission in 2020 has agreed to fine a fine of over $100,000 against the Democratic National Committee and Hillary Clinton's 2016 campaign over an investigation into alleged misreporting of spending related to the now infamous Steele dossier, where they hired a former uh, and foreign secret agent, Uh, Christopher Steele to put together this dossier that was filled with falsehoods, but never mind that because that's not important right now. That's uh, criminality under the bridge. The FEC, the Federal Election Commission, fined both organizations after a pair of now years-old complaints, one from the Campaign Legal Center and another from the conservative Coolidge Reagan Foundation, alleged that the party and campaign reported payments to the powerhouse Democrat law firm Perkins Coie as legal expenses when, in actuality, some of the money was earmarked for paying Fusion GPS through Perkins Coie to conduct opposition research on Donald Trump, as the Campaign Legal Center's original complaint read. The DNC and the Clinton campaign collectively agreed to pay $113,000 in fines. According to a separate conciliation agreement, the agency made with both parties. The DNC will pay $105,000, the Clinton campaign $8,000, and none of it comes out of Hillary Clinton's pockets, and there is no claim of criminality, no 34 felony counts, no none of that. The FCC... Conciliation agreements were made public Wednesday after the Coolidge Reagan Foundation first shared its response in a letter to the agency with the Washington Examiner. Politico, left-wing rag, independently obtained a second and similar letter the agency sent. Uh, and uh, I got to so this is this Hillary Clinton did exactly the same thing, and the DNC did exactly the same thing paying money for opposition research, which they claimed was intelligence, and they lied to the FISA court. You may remember the FBI lying to the FISA courts, the intelligence community lying to the FISA courts to get warrants, which they did to spy on people in the Trump inner circle. 
and the money came out of the wrong bucket. And that's what we're talking about with Trump yesterday being convicted of 34 felonies. 34 felony counts. Isn't that amazing? Yes, it is. Mm -mm -mm. I'm telling you. Now, let's go uh, Let's go to some audio, Jeff. Uh, Jeff Wolfin today for Michael Piercy, who is uh, off for family matters. Let's go to soundbite number 13. This is uh, Donald Trump's lawyer, Todd Blanche, after the verdict came down. Um, remarkable time we're living in. He wanted to be the one that was actually arguing because he's, he's a smart guy and he knows what he's doing. We, we made every decision together. You're talking about a man that's been indicted four times in one year in four, four different jurisdictions. Four different jurisdictions. Running for president and winning, and we're going to fight, wake up tomorrow and fight. It's not over. You know, it's not over at all. Uh, I am, uh, I'm telling you, these are, these are extraordinary things that we're witnessing in the United States of America. Truly extraordinary things. I am reminded that, uh, the Democrats have tried to have Donald Trump removed from the ballot in, uh, various states. They've, they've worked to have Robert F. Kennedy Jr. removed from ballots in various states. And, and that reminded me of Venezuela. Earlier this year, Venezuela's barred opposition candidate is now the fiery surrogate of her lesser-known replacement, was the headline from the Associated Press, May 16th of 2024, out of Sabana de Mendoza in Venezuela. Extraordinary stuff. That uh, Venezuelan opposition figure, Maria Corina Machado, she had been barred from the July 28th election, still crisscrossing the country, shaking hands, taking selfies, blowing kisses, promising to defeat President Nicolas Maduro, all as a surrogate for a quiet former diplomat who has not yet begun to campaign. But you see, in a communist country where the glories of socialism reign supreme, Venezuela used to be the most economically prosperous country in all of Latin America, and uh, it's completely bankrupted now because of Hugo Chavez and because of, uh, uh, of course, the current commie there who has his opposition leader, his opposition candidate removed from the ballot, and that's Nicolas Maduro. Because this is what commies do. And I don't know how many times I have to say this, but I've said it many times. These people, the Democrat Party today, is not liberal. It's not a liberal party. It's a leftist party. It's the kind of stuff we see in African bipole countries and in Latin American bipole countries run by commies, and it's what we're seeing now in the United States of America. Because they're not liberals, they're the left. They have this George Soros radical prosecutor, and and he ran on destroying and charging President Trump with crimes. Democrats in New York elected him to office because he ran on that premise. And uh, then he got the power, and sure enough, he started charging Donald Trump, Donald Trump with crimes. And the left-wing media is celebrating all of that because they're not legitimate journalists. They're Democrat, now left-wing activists. And I've got more for you coming up on, uh, on all of that and your calls as well. We are at 888 888- Six three zero nine six two five. You know, Father's Day is just around the corner, and with Father's Day just around the corner, what have you done about it? What do you give the man who has everything? Well, that's easy. You give him Omaha Steaks because a world-class father deserves world-class steaks. The Father's Day experts at Omaha Steaks have made it easy for you to put a big smile on Dad's face this This summer, this Father's Day, with hand-selected gift packages starting at just $89. That's cheaper than just taking them out to dinner once. All you have to do is go to omahasteaks.com and use the promo code PLANT, that's P-L-A-N-T-E, at checkout for an additional discount when you shop the gourmet gift packages for Father's Day at Omaha Steaks. Pick from premium proteins, juicy pork chops, air chilled chicken, beefy burgers, and of course, their beautiful steaks. You get to decide what you want. All you have to do is go to omahasteaks.com and use the promo code PLANT to get exclusive savings. Shop for unforgettable gifts that are guaranteed to make Dad's Day. 
day after day, because if there's one thing Omaha Steaks knows, it's that dads want steak. That's omahasteaks.com. The promo code is plant at checkout to save on exclusive packages starting at just $89. Yeah, we make fun of other countries for doing things like this. Our State Department condemns other countries for doing things like this. It has always been done until yesterday. You're listening to The Chris Plant Show. In about 32 minutes and uh, 33 minutes, and and uh, here's my query for you. That's similar to a question, but more queer. Here's my query for you. Will President Trump come down the escalator today for the press conference? Starting from the beginning, you know, the Democrats went crazy the moment that happened, so I think it would be great imagery for him to come down the escalator for his press conference today. Uh, Jeff, let's go to the telephones. Let's go to Kim Calling from Indiana, Kimberly, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Well, hi, Chris. I'm kind of nervous, so I'm hoping I can articulate what I told the uh, call screener. Um, oh, by the way, I love your show. Thank so you. I I'm, I'm nervous, the, too, if that helps. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> sure. So I think the Democrats just gave President Trump the greatest campaign um, strategy ever. He can now say that he understands is on par with Nelson Mandela and also reach out to the black and brown communities and tell them he understands their plight that they have in the racist and unjust criminal system and Democrat run courts and Democrat run cities. And when he's elected, he will do what he can and that maybe they should rethink who they vote for. <laughs> I think you're. I think you're onto it. I, and first of all, that was beautifully articulated. You're as comfortable as anyone I've ever heard anywhere in my life. And uh, you're right about the Nelson Mandela comparison. It's a great one. And Lech Walesa too in uh, in Poland. Um, you know, Martin Luther King was thrown in jail 29 times by Democrats, and um, maybe not every single time. But Mandela and Lech Walesa are the hot. All thrown in prison by corrupt powers, and now Donald Trump is being tried. It is the trial of his life. Uh, Kim, thank you very much. You did wonderfully. Uh, I hope you'll call back again. This is the Chris Plant Show. Looking at the big board here, uh, line nine, let's go to Blaze, calling from Bogota, Colombia, which is in South America, another continent altogether. Blaze, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Good morning. Thank you for taking my call. Of course. Um, I'm calling about the, um, this, obviously, about the situation with the Trump conviction. You know, um, all this talk about the appeal pro- process is important. Um, Whether he's guilty or innocent, that was important. Whether it helps him in the election, that's important. But I I honestly think that misses the the biggest point of all. Um, And that is, this is kind of, I know one of your callers mentioned Mandela. I think this is our Alfred Dreyfus moment. Because what this does is it really breaks the legitimacy of the court system. Um, Why do we obey judges? We obey judges. They don't have guns. Like they're not the armed wrench. We we obey judges and courts because we think we should. It's instinctive. It, we're brought up believing in the court system. Um, what we've we've seen now is we've got that there is a there are court systems now which have judges that are in place within the court system that are indifferent to the law. We have attorneys general. We have prosecutors that are willing to use that system not in not in good faith but openly, happily, brazenly to destroy a political opponent. Um, and that, that breaks that compact, I think, that exists between the public and the court system. Um, we can talk about appeals. You know, probably this will be turned on appeal. You know, appeals are supposed to be based on errors in, errors in law or law and fact. 
there's no error here. This was none of this was an accident. There were no mistakes. Everything was done completely, deliberately, purposely, openly. It was in the face of everybody that watched it because and they were saying, no, we can do this and we're going to do this and and suck it up. And so everybody that's not just for Trump supporters, anybody that believes in the rule of law, we now know that this is this is out there. This is this is going to be used against us. And the left, they know it, too, because now they know they have a new tool that they can use. So they don't even believe in the legitimacy of the system anymore. And honestly, I don't know how you get this back. I can think of maybe one way. But, you know, I heard Turley last night and he says, believe in the believe in the uh, in the appeal system. And I think he's wrong because because it the, the appeal doesn't matter anymore because this is this is much deeper problem. This is now this sort of has broken, I think, a compact between the public and the court system. You know, we've lost our faith in the in, in a lot of the Department of Justice. We've lost faith in can we believe in the FBI? Can we believe in our security system? Now we can't now we can't can't even believe in the courts. We can't believe in the media. You know, and anything they say is propaganda. I mean, how, what are we supposed to believe in? At least we had the courts. And now we know that the courts are are um, are, are just are, are corrupt. Um, Engeron was the first one, but that was civil. This is criminal. This is liberty of the subject. And, uh, you know, and, and okay, fine. Tr- Trump will probably win the election. I think probably he will. Um, he was innocent or guilty. Probably he wasn't, he wasn't guilty because there was no offense. Um, there's an appeal. Okay, fine. It gets turned around. But how do you get back the trust that the people are supposed to have in the court system? I agree with you. You know, we should they should feel retribution. But in the end, also, doesn't that also undermine the, the faith in the system? You know, I don't know how we get that back. And that's where I think the big Alfred Dreyfus was the, the big turning point in France. And maybe, you know, maybe that's the parallel we have here here now. I don't know what you think. Well, you've uh, you've uh, thrown a lot of very good stuff and very smart stuff. You're right. Alfred uh, Dreyfus and um, uh, you know, more than a century ago, a Jewish military officer was accused of treason and uh, tried. And uh, you're right, it was a, it was a uh, uh, critical point historically in the uh, French uh, politics and, and beyond. Uh, and, and, uh, uh, and this is the former president of the United States and current candidate to become president of the United States again, who's been brought up on charges that you could very easily have charged Hillary Clinton with a couple of years ago, but they did not. Uh, and and I talk a lot, uh, Blaze, about the the lack of confidence the, uh, that we have all learned over the last handful of years. Really, I, I say since Barack Obama came along and started corrupting our institutions in a really flagrant way and using the IRS to target Tea Party groups and Patriot groups. If you had the word Patriot, you were considered to be a target. You were you were uh, abused by the federal government under Barack Obama, who uh, was mentored, of course, by a, a communist, Frank Marshall Davis, and he is an Alinskyite, Saul Alinsky, rules for radicals, and so on. And the abuses of power under the the Obama administration really, and, and honestly, you know, you probably would agree with me that Joe Biden's not really in charge of anything. He's not running anything. He doesn't know what's going on at the agencies and the departments. And and I think that these uh, Obama people and perhaps Obama himself are very much involved in everything that the Democrat Party is doing to abuse power in the United States now. And I've been talking about the collapse in confidence in our Justice Department and our FBI, and it's tragic. I mean, our country really can't survive this kind of thing. And now and now, the court system, with these abuses of the court system, uh, and, and this is it's New York and a Soros guy, but Soros has these prosecutors in cities large and small and even in counties uh, around the country, uh, including in Virginia and Chicago and St. Louis, and some of them have actually been removed because they're so filthy and so corrupt. Uh, but, um, no, I, I, I don't find anything that you've said that I would take issue with because this is uh, another blow to our, to our system of government by the left targeting their political enemies, abusing the power that they have to secure power for them, more power for themselves and to crush the other guy. 
And then it's ironic, I think, that in America, that the little guy in this, the guy who's being destroyed, is a New York City billionaire. And only in America could you have could you have a circumstance like uh, like this one. Uh, and yeah, we're on the rocks, man. We're uh, we're in tough shape, Blaze. And you you sound like uh, you're uh, very well informed on this and many other issues. And you sound like you might be from Minnesota too. No, no, I'm I'm not even a I'm not even a Stars fan. I'm a Blackhawks fan. But no, it's, it's the uh... <laughs> really it's a, a, a Chicago. They have the best logo in all of sports. The Chicago Blackhawks. Uh, are you are you Canadian then? Yeah, yeah, I'm actually a Canadian. Okay, um, but I was a Blackhawks fan my whole life, and Stan Mikita was my hero. But no, <laughs> I, I I I'm a common law professor at a law school, and I teach students in Columbia civil law students about the about the common law system and how it works. Uh-huh. And I obviously you base the United States is a, is a very, very important part of that. I teach students all the time about, you know, the essence of the, of the, of the legal system. And it's, it's universal. It's not just the United States. It's not just Canada. It's not just England. You have to know the offense you're charged with. Unanimity of the jury verdict in a, in a, in a, in a conviction. How do you, how do you, um, how, how do you just bypass that in a court system? And it's not just that the judge did this. It's just that now we know that within that court system, but we also know that in, um, we know that in Georgia, we know that in Washington, D.C., we know that in California, we know that, in, and you can go through all the states, that there are judges ensconced within that system that, are pre- that they don't care anything about intellectual honesty. They don't care anything about the legal tradition. They don't care anything about the Magna Carta. Right and and, and <laughs> that came out of the Magna Carta for the past eight centuries. That's they don't right. Know any of it. And they don't care about it. It's not, and it's not even that they don't care about it. They're happy about ignoring it. I they're, mean, they're hostile. Not, they're hostile to it because their instincts are authoritarian and or totalitarian. And I'm, uh, I think it's wonderful that you bring that up because I've talked about their contempt for the Enlightenment in the past. And you know, this is the the left. The American left is now part of the global left, the international left. They hold the Bill of Rights in the United States in contempt, our Constitution, our founding principles, our, the, our founding fathers, the individual in contempt, and they're the greatest manifestation of the, of the Enlightenment, uh, which is the, you know, the greatest revelation of Western civilization and of humankind, by the way. And that does begin with the Magna Carta, 1215. And, and, uh, and you're right, they, they would undo... The, the Enlightenment and uh, the, certainly the Bill of Rights and the American Constitution and the Magna Carta. I, 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 I agree with everything you're saying, Blaze. You know, and, and, you know, they've, they've taken away, you know, liberalism used to mean liberty, you know? It That's right. To, it had freedom of speech, freedom of thought, freedom to express I'm, I'm a human being, so there I have the right to think. Therefore, since I can think, I can Yeah, speak. that's right. That's right. Well, your phone is starting to break up on us there uh, for, for whatever uh, reason. I'm guessing you're coming in over the, over the Internet, uh, um, reasonably so, from, from Bogota, Colombia. And uh, listen, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very happy that you called in. I appreciate everything that you have to say, and, and it's, it's true. And this may be a watershed moment. I wouldn't be at all surprised in American history because America changed yesterday, right, Blaze? And this is, I, I hope that we can reco- recover from this. But honestly, Democrats and Republicans alike and independents should be looking at this and recognizing that this, you know, and, and one of the ironies, I, I like to say uh, a couple of things, were it not for double standards, liberals would have no standards at all, and they have no sense of irony. And I believe both of those things to be true. Uh, but they're accusing Donald Trump and Republicans of being a threat to our democracy. Uh, we're a republic, but it is, in fact, uh, uh, they who are the threat to our democracy. And this is a stark demonstration of the danger that they pose, not just to our judicial system and to our system of law enforcement, but honestly to what we have come to recognize as Western civilization in the 21st century and the 20th century, which, Blaze, I believe is under assault right now, and the United States is teetering on the brink of uh, slipping into the abyss. And when the United States goes into the abyss, then and the left knows this, then the rest of the world follows quite easily. Those dominoes will will uh, drop uh, no problem. Am I right, Blaze? That is 
That is so true. You know, the United States, you say it, the United States changed yesterday. You realize the world watches the United States, right? I mean, obviously, uh, it, it's the leader. Why do, why do they debate in Colombia Roe versus Wade? You know, because, it's, because they follow what happens on the United States. You have an Australian guy, Jason, who calls in all the time, an Australian cousin. I'm mm-hmm. Canadian. He's Australian. Uh-huh. We're all part of that same tradition, the Western civilization tradition. And that is what is under, I think is under attack. It's under attack in Gaza. It's under attack in everywhere you look. It's, it's under attack. And, and, and what happened yesterday, I think it, it knocks the stills out of one of the, the foundations of, of, of our system. Because once, you, once people can't believe they trust the court system, then what do they do? They go, maybe they go to self-help remedies. Um, you know, I don't know. That's I, I don't support yeah. that, by the way. But that, mm-hmm. but that's a lot yeah. of people might start doing that, and um, it's a, it's a, it's a huge. I think it's a huge problem. I don't think they realize when Schumer went onto the court, the Supreme Court steps a couple of years ago, and said to uh, that said to those guys, the, the, the court, you guys don't, you guys have un- unleashed the whirlwind. Yeah. No, they've unleashed the whirlwind, and this is the problem. Um, because civilization depends on, essentially, it depends on the legal system. It depends upon people solving disputes in a civilized way, with a, with a referee, an umpire that you can trust. Um, if we now don't can't trust our, our umpire, if we can't trust the referee, I don't know where we go, and I don't know how we get it back. Um, this is the real problem. Because how do you, how do you how do you change that? How do you reinstill the trust in that system. You know, if, you, if your girlfriend cheats on you, how do you get trust in it again, you know? Right, um, right. It's like that. Yeah. Um, it, it's a dangerous situation, and they don't care. No, because you're absolutely I right. I, the, no, they hold us in contempt. They hold uh, the uh, Western norms in contempt because they, the left is authoritarian. They're drunk with power, and they're here to destroy. They're here to seize power, and they're here to destroy. Uh, Blaze, uh, wonderful call. I appreciate you calling in very, very much. I uh, thank you very much. I think your uh, your uh, courses in law school there in Bogota, Colombia, must be fascinating uh, to listen to, and I hope your students appreciate you. You're right, democracy, and you're right in Gaza. Uh, I've been calling it a, a a battle between civilization and the opposite of civilization, and you're absolutely right uh, about uh, I think everything that you've said. Um, Blaze, God bless you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. I think they're lucky to have you there. In Bogota, Colombia, you're a thinking man, a thinking person, a product of the Enlightenment, and uh, we all were. This is The Chris Plant Show. The New York Post yesterday had the story, Iran's supreme leader praises the Democrats, praises U.S. anti-Israel campus protests after his brutal crackdown against regime demonstrators. Victor Nava at the New York Post with the story from day before yesterday. Iranian Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, known for brutally suppressing demonstrations in the Islamic Republic, expressed his support on Wednesday for the anti-Israel protests and protesters on U.S. college campuses, claiming they are on the right side of history, a turn of phrase that Barack Hussein Obama likes to use. Dear university students in the United States of America, you are standing on the right side of history, said the 85-year-old radical Islamist cleric. Posted on X, he hasn't been banned. You have now formed a branch of the Resistance Front, Resistance Front in uh, uh, capitalized letters, and have begun an honorable struggle yeah, to kill all the Jews and destroy civilization. In the face of your government's ruthless pressure, there is no ruthless pressure except against the troglodytes from a genocidal hell, which openly supports Zionists. That's what uh, the Ayatollah Ali Khamenei said. That's the Jews. And uh, he's applauding the, and these are all Democrat Party protests. Make no mistake about it. If you're a Jew and you're a Democrat, you need to have your head examined at this point in history. Uh, Amazing stuff. It's just uh, 
Stroney says, I too empathize with you young people and value your perseverance. So the Ayatollah jumped in to praise the Democrat Party, uh, sponsored, funded, orchestrated, propagandized, brainwashed protesters. Amazing stuff. There it is. And he quotes the Koran and and he's encouraging the Democrat, uh, the genocide of the Jews and the help that the Democrat Party is giving the Ayatollah, who's also funding Hamas, which uh, murdered 1,200 people. <laughs> Little glitch there. And, uh, and on and on. Now, Al-Qaeda. Here is the headline from Just the News. Al-Qaeda. The leader of Al-Qaeda has now praised the pro-Palestinian protest in the United States of America. The Democrats are officially in bed with the Islamic Revolution in Tehran and with Al-Qaeda. And the statement they put out, we're very happy. Every Muslim was happy. They're thrilled with what the Democrats are doing in the United States of America on college campuses and beyond. Al-Qaeda. 